Good Monday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel that talks about the cars and trucks and SUVs and motorcycles and dogs and attitudes, and hey, good morning there, thanks for tuning in my channel this morning, anybody that's new, that's watching my morning conversations of me sharing car talk and state of the times talk. And come on, puppies, let's go. Come on. And getting the dogs in. What a morning. I am like 30 minutes later than I should be because I'm chasing so many damn problems this morning. Ants in the pantry, dogs chasing rabbits, wife trying to do this. I mean, it's just like, wow, this morning's so, it's a Monday morning. It's the Monday morning routine. Maybe you know that. But wow, what a week. Come on, Will. Just here. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Get in the barn. Get in the barn. Get in tomorrow. Come on, let's go. Get in. Come on, let's go. So, uh, what a win. What a win. Is that a win? Yes. A triple win. Last week was a triple. A triple win. Yeah. For me, last week was a triple win. Yeah, let's talk about the win. I mean, the life, when is the world, is the word win being used more than less? That's so funny, yeah. Like a leaf just flew by me. <laughs> so I can hear what a win. But one of my good subscribers who goes to the car meet, he said, be very careful of this Jeep Grand Wagoneer having the airbag lowering the car down. He said, if you park too close to a curb, when those retractable uh, steps come out, they will hit the curb and destroy the uh, steps. They won't, they, they don't have like a, uh, a pressure type of release to like your rear hatch or your windows if it feels pressure they retract back <clears throat> and uh <clears throat> come on pop let's go come on I'm getting voice going here's the, the lightning i'm back in the lightning still charging i plugged this thing in 14 hours ago and it's still charging yeah i'm gonna be driving the lightning this week i did a lot of riding around <clears throat> and i just like to keep the vehicles kind of uh the routine of changing out vehicles and riding around different vehicles and rotating the miles. That's kind of all I do. Now, here it is. Dog. The one dog just isn't showing up. It just doesn't end. I talk about this all the time. Dogs. If you don't own dogs, you don't know. But if you own dogs, you know. It's a never-ending challenge of dogs behaving. All right. So, anyways, let's go back to the win. What a winning week I had last week. If you were watching my channel... If you stay in tune with my channel, my channel will show you me, will show me in the buying that Jeep Grand Wagoneer. It'll show me buying a, a uh, Honda Goldwing. And then it shows me buying back my Dodge Challenger Gold Rush. Hey, Willow! Willow! I mean, this is just stuff drives you nutty when you have dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so now what I can do, I can leave him outside here, but all he's going to do is he start barking. So in my office, all the dogs start going nuts. Yeah. Oh, well, forget it. He can just stay outside and do his own thing. Yeah, so anyways, so I, it's a win where I bought the, uh, the, the Dodge Challenger back. Wow. I mean, just an incredible... Uh... Come on, let's go. Get in. Would you get in? Get in the office. Jeez. Yikes. Think you got relationship problems? Yeah. You think, uh, think you have a challenge? Just getting on with your wife and everybody else. Get water bottles. Oh, just too much stuff going on. It's a Monday morning. Anybody figuring this out yet? The Monday. Get back in the routine. Come on, let's go. Get up the stairs. Come on. Get, get up here. Come on. Go, 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 go. Get up here. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I keep the video going, it's easier to upload a video. So that's kind of why I hate to turn off the video to go chase the dogs. So yeah, my face into your face, triggering setup here. And wow, yeah, is it crooked? Yeah, crooked as you are, buddy. Gee, thanks. <clears throat> wow. So, anyways, <laughs> yeah, the, the conversation this morning is all about winning. Let's talk about winning. I mean, this we are such a a time it seems like does it seem like the winning conversation does it seem like the losing conversation is the more dominant conversation this morning come on 
We got to make an upbeat. Have to have an upbeat conversation. And I thought to myself this morning, it's the same old thing. At the last second, I'm like, what would be possibly entertaining to talk about my YouTube channel to keep the morning conversations going, which I enjoy to make with a huge, you know, following. So, yeah, I thought to myself, wow, <laughs> I had a triple. Well, NASCAR in the uh, NASCAR, <laughs> the NHRA, National Hot Rod Association, drag uh, drag nationals for wide in Las Vegas. Tony Stewart had a win, and <clears throat> they have four you know four lanes of them racing. A lot of racers don't like that. It's I guess it's kind of intimidating. But here's the thing: for Tony Stewart, it's interesting that Tony Stewart owns the Haas Racing that has Matt Hagen and Leah Pruitt on it and some others, and he doesn't race on his own team. It's just too damn expensive. So he races for another team. Can't think of the name, the family, and he drives a uh, top alcohol dragster, not a top fuel. So if anybody's kind of not so abreast to the drag racing, top fuel drag drag dragsters, you know these are three hundred and seventy mile an hour, three second, you know mid threes, high threes, second cars. So a top alcohol dragster. Those are more like the five second, you know, 260, you know, 270. So there's about a 50 mile an hour spread, and there's close to, you know, a second and a half to two second difference in, in speed. So Tony Stewart has raised his hand. He'll tell you he's not at that level of top fuel, but he's doing top alcohol, which is impressive. So apparently, Tony Stewart got his first. Now, an HRA trophy in Las Vegas. And then his team, Matt Hagen, took a top funny car. And then top fuel went to uh, Antron Brown, which he's been struggling. Leah Pruitt, she qualified, but she didn't make it to the finals. And Brittany Forrest, and then John Forrest, and funny car against, with Matt Hagen. And then a guy, Glenn... I think his name Glenn Chase or something. I can't, I can't think of the guy's name. In pro stock, he uh, he won. So anyway, so there was a uh, for would have been it would have been really interesting if you think about it. If if Leah Pruitt would have won on on uh, Sunday, and then Matt Hagen would have won, and then Tony Stewart would have won, that'd have been a triple. But it's a triple crown. You know, they got the Kentucky Derby and then the other Derby. Yeah, so in a horse, they get the triple crown. So that's what I thought, man. I thought, wow, what a week last week of a triple win for me. And and it's all about winning and just beyond believable, even for me, for what I pulled off on that Grand Wagon here in that Challenger. And the kind of gold wing, that's a huge win. To give up that Honda Rebel 1100 DCT, I mean, even when I bought it, I knew it was a small platform bike. But I was like, yeah, you know what? Uh, maybe just be a fun bike to go blast around the back roads and maybe get more of your skills. I mean, having a lighter bike, it, it creates more confidence in your riding. And that's what it's all about, riding motorcycles. I mean, yesterday, if you watch my channel, we rode the, we're rode we riding the Harleys again. We're riding bikes again. I've just come to closure that I'm just riding. I've been riding most of my life, and I'm just going to keep on riding and just hope for the best. Pray for a miracle. That's, I, that's my saying on my channel is pray for a miracle. I even have a video of how to pray for a miracle. Yeah. How do you pray? And so, so the, anyways, so last week when it just came down to the end, just for how everything played out between Friday and Saturday, it's beyond believable of what played out. And even to the point that the owner of that dealership, Don's dealership, I know that guy is actually very disappointed. Because he thought he had that gold ticket in his back pocket. He didn't think I'd get that back. I mean, I know deep down, he be, and the reason I say this is because if, you're, if you, you stay tuned in my channel and you saw on how I gave up that gold rush challenger, but this is what nobody understands. And it's very personal information. Where anybody follow my channel is, I don't, I would hear anybody here in front of me go, you were just stupid. You were crazy. And I would say, yeah, but I don't know. In the end, I'll agree to that if things don't play out in the end of me getting a lot of money for our car one day. 
Or I just end up keeping that car and I find out down the road it costs so much money to buy one that I know I did the right thing. And here's the thing. Last fall, if you stay in tune with my channel, I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to change the way you say things. You know, do you follow me? I mean, I can't stand that same quote on YouTube's community. So if you stay in touch or stay in tune with my channel, last fall you see I bought last September of last year, I bought that Gold Rush Challenger Carvana. Well, here's the ball game. I already had a Toyota 4Runner finance with them through Carvana, and I already had a relationship with them. So when it comes to me wanting to buy my own things that are of great expense, most banks, they're just not interested. It's these car dealerships that have the finance people that get rewarded for closing deals. They go the extra mile, be an extra mile to get these deals done. And if it went for this unique individual at the uh Dodge dealership, a very incredible, talented young man, these deals wouldn't be going down. I mean, incredible guy. This guy's going to go a long way. He's going to be incredibly successful in the career that he puts his you know mind to. So for me, here's the ballgame. Last September, I had to put a big chunk of money down to buy that Gold Rush Challenger off Carvana, and I had to pay 29.9% interest to, be a, to accept the deal. Now, most people are like, you're crazy. I would never do that. Right. I agree on that note, but here's the downside. It's not a dime a dozen car. And there was 338 people behind me on that Carvana website hoping I hit the reject button and I don't close the deal. And initially I did. Initially I did and I thought I lost it. Then I got it back. So I bought the car, but I knew when I bought that car, I had a three to six month time frame max of paying that type of interest on that car. Or I am just kidding myself. Be unbelievable. So I knew that this, you know, late winter, I just knew that I had to either sell the car or refinance it. And sure, right. Yeah, try to refinance it. Yeah, good luck. It's the same old story. The credit bureau looks at my report and they see a gazillion motorcycles, a gazillion cars, and they're like, we want nothing to do with this. We don't want anything to do with this. We, we're, there's no incentives to give this guy, ice guy, any money. So no, just sell it, just, just sell a bunch of your debt, then we'll talk. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because I had to get creative on how to figure out how to get this deal done and get that challenger refinanced. And I asked the dealership, can they just refinance it? They can't do that. So that's where I woke up at like two in the morning and I started thinking to myself, I know how to handle this deal. So I had to sacrifice, I had to sacrifice, <coughs> excuse me, drinking my coffee. You know, I really have noticed here lately. Really, the GERD thing, you know, it, it comes, but the coughing part <clears throat> really has gone down substantially here recently, but it's a coffee. The, the, the coffee irritates the GERD, so it makes you want to cough. So that's what that is. It's just a stupid-ass coffee that I'm drinking to get my caffeine in to me get the day going. So, so my apologies if I'm coughing in front of you on my YouTube channel and hacking and coughing. Hopefully I'm not, but I do. So anyways, I knew I had to sacrifice the Challenger for the Grand Wagoneer, which I knew in the end it would turn into the Bronco. So some people on comments on my YouTube channel, they're saying, well, in all reality, you just really traded your Bronco for the Wagoneer. And in so many aspects, exactly. I just traded monies and shifted money around to get a better rate. So I lowered my rate from basically 30% to 10%. Yeah, I mean, the rate still isn't like your 3, 4, 5, 6%. So yeah, it's still, in many people's eyes, a high rate. But at the same time, when you have a credit score that I have that's in the 600s because of so much debt and so many liabilities, you're not going to get the 2, 3, 4% rate. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, you're just delusional if you think you're going to go apply for a credit card, get a $10,000 credit card at 0% interest offer when you have a 590, 620 credit score. It's not going to happen. You have to have a 7, 800, you know, beacon credit score. So I already know, you know, the dynamics of my credit that's not going to allow me. So anyways, so here's the thing, though. So you witnessed me buy the Honda Goldwing. Great. That was a huge win. The guy pretty much gave me back... What's interesting about the Honda Goldwing deal is this. There was a really nice brand new blue Honda Goldwing that I had my eyes on really for the last two, three months. And so I called about that 
vehicle, and then my sale, my manager of the dealership said, why don't you pick up the nice used one that we have here, which is the one I ended up buying. And that was perfect because that used one had 937 miles on it. And the way it was discounted, it kind of just made up me giving back that um, Rebel 1100. So it was just really like me just buying a brand new Goldwing and paying full retail versus buying a used one where it offset the difference of the vehicle. So it was a perfect deal. I was a huge win. And after riding that bike home on Friday, I mean, huge. <clears throat> that bike, that motorcycle was just awesome. And I've had, I had the Gold Wings. I had two 2018 Gold Wings. I had the full tour with the airbag set up, and I had the non-tour bronze colored one. So I had those. So I've, I, I kind of just really forgot how nice they are. So anyway, so that was a huge win. So then we go to the Grand Wagoneer. The Grand Wagoneer deal, initially I was getting ready to take my car to go buy that car. And last second, I couldn't do it. And there was another couple on the car. And I just, you watch my video. If you stay in tune to my videos, you'll see that that car, I thought, sold. And then all of a sudden, the sales guy's calling me. And he's saying that people still haven't taken it. So then I had a chance to reevaluate and to kind of try to re-strategize what would make sense on sacrifice that gold rush that wagoneer. Is that like anybody else? To give up that gold rush wagoneer, oh my gosh. Yeah, you're an idiot. I don't disagree with that. Like, yeah, right, but you didn't know the dynamics of the financing on that gold rush challenger, so you don't understand what drove this whole finagling of deals. So do so I get the wagoneer? Give the gold rush, and now I'm like, all right, how do we get the gold rush back? And now I have a conversation with the owner of the dealership, and of course now he wants me to pay a little bit more for the car because of just the fact that I gave the car back, and for them to put the time, you know, it's like, whatever, that's fine, because in all reality, he gave me great numbers in my Challenger, and he gave me fabulous numbers in my Bronco, a huge win for my Bronco. I mean, I, I they paid me four grand more than I paid for it, so that was a huge win. They paid me more than I paid for my Challenger, which in the end, that's just money, swapping money for money in so many aspects on what money I got out of it to put towards the Grand Wagoneer. So it just, it's just pushing money around, but at better financing packages. But here's the thing. The owner of the dealership, he wanted that gold rush. And I know deep down that he he was like, yeah, sure. You can have the gold rush back, but I know deep down he's thinking there's no way. There's no way because he knows the challenges that have gone on in the back end to get these car dealers done. So here's the deal. It's five car dealers. I've done five car deals with this dealership now since like February. Yeah, wow. Beyond believable that we pulled off five deals. So I know the owner at dealership, the gold rush to him was the golden ticket because – and keep in mind, I told him on Friday, I'm going to get the car back. I'm going to have the finance guy, you know, structure the deal and blah, blah, blah. This is Friday afternoon that we now start trying to get the deal done. And sure enough, it's Friday evening and the deal hasn't been approved. And so my finance guy is like, we'll, we'll talk tomorrow. We'll talk Saturday. Now I'm like, up oh, here we go. So I gave him my car late Friday afternoon. And brought home the Wagoneer. And so you know, I'm just like, all right. But I'm just thinking to myself, that car is going to get snatched up. There's no doubt in my mind that that owner of that dealership, if somebody sees that car and offers him stupid money, he's going to let it go. There's no doubt in my mind. There, I don't, car dealerships are all about the money factor. They, you can be the greatest guy in the world. At the end of the day, they're going to be like, I mean, I guarantee you somebody watching my channel has a personal friend owns a dealership. That are personal friends for lifetime. Yeah, I get it. They're going to treat you differently. But the, being me, that I buy cars all over the place. I don't have like that personal relationship where I'm friends with this guy on a, on a personal level. So, so now we go to Saturday morning, and this is where I talk about the car gods. And I know this. You know, right now I know my conversations all about you, all about you. Well, I'm just sharing stories that maybe other people can relate with because everybody has challenges and everybody has their secrets in their life about what 
they're doing and dealing with and they don't want to disclose that because it's embarrassing. So hopefully my channel can help others be like, hey, look, here's a guy that's being upfront and sincere of what he's done and how he handles things. And maybe you can step back and go, you know, I can kind of relate with that and I can obviously do this and do that. And this would kind of make sense and, and I don't feel ashamed because this guy here, he just point blank tells me the things that he does. And that's what it's all about. That's why it kind of irritates me right now and people are like, oh, it's all about him, all about I. It's like I am sharing my own life experiences with you so maybe you can be become better and figure things out better than I do. I mean, that's all it's about is just sharing information that hopefully helps you. Just like at the car show, the gentleman that had a Wagoneer and he sold his Wagoneer for a – he uh, tell you ride. If it wasn't from coming up to me yesterday and say, "Hey, let me give you a heads up. If you park that Grand Wagoneer next to the curb and you have that lowered air suspension, easy in, easy out access, those running boards are going to be obliterated." I never would have thought of that. So that was great information. How does he know? Because he's in the community and he's heard these stories. So back to the Gold Rush Challenger. So now Saturday morning, I had to go take care of business. And it's like I can tell you, it's like the car gods. It's like the car gods. Because I left Saturday morning, and I would have been gone a good portion of the day to take care of the company, run the business. And I get up on the road up here, and I'm in dead stop traffic. And a major accident has happened, and I'm not moving. I'm in the Grand Wagoneer to kind of drive around. I did a little video of it, if you saw my first impressions of the Wagoneer. And so I'm out there getting ready to enjoy the day of driving on a Wagoneer, working out of it. And I'll just hear from my finance guy, you know, hopefully by midday, early afternoon. And so now I'm just dead in traffic and I'm dead in traffic. And I just keep on sitting there. It's 15 minutes of going by. And I mean, it's, it's not moving, but I'm only like five miles from my house. And eventually I'm like, you know what? I mean, I'm, I'm just turning around. I'm just going back home. And for me to go another way to go, it's just, it's a Saturday. So now I'm like, I'm just going to go back home. And so as I'm driving back home, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go back home. I got so many chores to do on the property. I'll just start working my chores. Then I'll just wait to run a finance guy. And literally, as I'm getting ready to pull into my street and into my house, I make a quick left-hand turn, and I drive to dealership. And I'm like, you know what? I got to dealership. There's no doubt in my mind. I have my energy. I got to go to dealership. I got to get this finance guy. I got to I gotta figure out how to get this done. He's not, he's not going to get it done. So, so I drive right to the dealership. My car is in the parking lot, you know, all cleaned up, sitting out there like a regular customer car. And so now I go into the finance guy, and he's hit a wall. He's not getting anywhere to get this deal done. So now I'm trying to strategize on how we get this deal done. So, so anyways, so I, I go ahead and I just we talk and we continue to work the deal. And and so now I'm like, all right, let me let's do it this angle. So I, I brought a whole other angle on how to do this. And I was in the office with him, and he's calling these bankers. And I mean, it's no, and it's a no, and it's a no, and it's a no, and a no. And so now, you know, I've been in his office at least an hour, hour and a half. And so finally, we kind of come to a whole, whole different idea how to do this whole deal. And and then this one bank is is kind of on the edge. Do they do it? They don't. So he gets on the phone. Like the piranha man he is. And he finagles this guy to buy the freaking deal. But the, but the story is, this guy just has too much fucking debt. Excuse the word. I mean, you know, sorry for the language. That's basically what they're saying. Is this guy just has too much. We don't want this deal. But anyway, so he finagles and pulls that deal off Saturday afternoon. And, oh my gosh. Meanwhile, meanwhile... Then my sales guy is like, the, your car is already online for like $115,000. Your car is already, you know, your car is already getting hits. The, 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 the GM or the general sales manager and other salespeople are begging the uh, sales manager to put the freaking car in the showroom so they can sell it. So for me, it's like, Jesus Christ, man. But I knew this. So here's the thing. Had I not, had I had that car crash on Saturday morning not happened, and had I driven up the road and I spent the day working out in the field, not being in the office to help this finance guy get this deal done, I would have to honestly say that it's a 50 50 shot, if not greater, that that car would disappear. There's no doubt in my mind 
that if the deal was still ongoing and then the conversation went to, well, we've got to talk to some other key people that aren't in on the weekend. we got to wait till Monday morning. Have anybody heard this story at the Ram Tour X? That that vehicle, okay, so now if that, if that would have gone on, if that would have happened, there's no doubt in my mind the car would be gone. Because the owner would be like, okay, Mr. Iceman, your car came in, I gave you good money, and we have to make money, man, and you couldn't get the deal done. And since you couldn't get the deal done, we had to take the money. And so, and they probably, would, it's possible if a few people have shown up, they may have gotten 120, 125 grand for that car. No doubt in my mind. And then I would have been, I told you guys, I got there and said, this car disappears. I don't know if I can be diplomatic about this this time. I don't know if I can be diplomatic about this car disappearing. That's my car. I'm getting it back. And be patient. So, wow. So, what a win. Talk about a triple win. The Honda Goldwing, the Jeep Wagoneer, and the, and the Gold Rush. And, yes, did I give up the Ford Bronco? Yes, I gave up the Ford Bronco. But the, the, the thing is, anybody here watching the channel, they know that you can go still buy a Ford Bronco or Raptor next year and probably the next year. Can you buy a Dodge Challenger next year? No, you can't. It's over. And I think as time goes on, more than ever, the value of these cars are going to continue to appreciate. And I've said from day one, my gut instinct that car is, is worth a buck twenty five, buck fifty. But in all reality, is if I continue to be successful and financial rewarded in my life, I might get rid of that car. But here's what's really interesting: the Ford GT five hundred Heritage Edition. So I really wanted to give that car up instead of my Gold Rush. And no, actually, I wanted to give that car up instead of the Bronco. So that's right. So we did negotiate. I tried to sacrifice, I tried to not get rid of the Braptor and give up my Ford GT500 Heritage Edition that has 88 miles in it, on it, sitting in Tennessee. Nothing there. I mean, listen to me. If you're watching my channel, anybody out there that's looking for a GT500 right now, Heritage Edition, if you're really, really patient, they're not selling. You're going to get a steal on one. They're not selling. Coons, Sterling Ford has GT500s they've bought from other dealerships. Some of those cars are 200 days in on not selling. I called my good friend at Coons Showing Ford and talked to him in great length about the value of that GT500 that I have. And he's like, There's, the market's gotten soft. The people with money, the money is drying up. This is so incredible. I talk about it all the damn time. Sure, you watch my channel, sick of hearing it. I predicted 2022 to be what 2023 is. I predicted 2022 would be the change of all the free money disappearing, all the stupid money disappearing. And so what I'm hearing is right now the car market, it is definitely changing. Everybody that's just a boatload of money and just throws it at anything they want, it's definitely changed. So the GT500, I mean, very disappointing that my GT500... Its value is is not is, isn't even what I paid for. It. Wow! But yet my Bronco is worth more than I paid for. It. We get my Gold Rush is worth more than I paid for. It. But the GT five hundreds they're now just kind of not much going on. Wow! And here's the problem with that, and I already know this is. Ford's building another year of Mustangs. So Ford's going to build a better, better ass GT500 in the next two, three years. So that Heritage Edition, that's probably a 20 or 30 year, I would say conservative 10 years of a real value big time in that car. Because if Ford releases a GT500 for 2025 or 2026, I would say 2026 probably, model year. That's better ass than the uh, 2022 going out edition. It's not going to be a sought after vehicle for many, many years. Yeah, wow. The wins, right? Are we winning? You know, and, and so I was going to really have talked so much on my stories here, but I just myself, are we winning? You know, are we winning in today's, you know, economy? I think a lot of people would say no. <laughs> are we winning? I mean, are you winning in the value of your stock market? Uh, many probably say no. Are you winning 
in the value of your cars? Probably most would say no, especially if you've got an electric vehicle like me. I mean, I could talk about this all morning long, which I'm not. I'm too busy. I got to wrap it up. A lot about me. I get all that. But I just like to share stories so that people that follow, follow, people that stay in tune with my channel can just have a better overall picture of what's, you know, happened, what's going on, what the crazy things I do to come to closure, what makes sense and doesn't. And yeah, then does any of it make sense? No, not really. Yeah, I get all that. But I just like to share my uh, stories of what I do that hopefully can radiate back to you or relate to you of what will uh, could help you because you can use me as an example. This guy's crazy. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for watching my channel. Appreciate all the great comments and the support. And always stay tuned, stay safe, and God bless. And have a great day.